So I'm going to start with DNA. Okay, we have been in the age of knowing the human genomic DNA sequence since 2003. Okay, that means that we know the entire set of DNA genes that make up who we are. But we still have very little understanding of how those genes work and how that sequence actually makes us who we are. So it's a continuing puzzle in science to figure out how those genes work. And primary among those challenges is the brain, often considered the final frontier. So how do we make a brain? How does it work? What's a thought? Okay, how do we maintain the brain and how do we repair our brain in disease and injury? So this is where simple but extraordinary systems called model organisms take center stage. So model organisms like Drosophila, the simple fruit fly, and a technique, a very old technique used by scientists called genetics, provides us the tools to unravel the puzzle of gene function in the brain. So via genetics, we can generate mutant flies lacking certain functional genes and ask what are the properties of this mutant fly. So the tiny fruit fly Drosophila, in fact, has the core set of genes that we have. So it's composed, it's pulled down to the very basic bare bones, but it's all there, all those pathways. It also has a brain. Okay, it's a brain much like our brain, organized into functional centers just like ours. And it has brain functions like ours. It can learn, it can remember, it sleeps. All these things that, that make up what our brain is, the fly actually has. And importantly, the genes function the same. So you can take a fly that's mutant in a gene, such as a gene that makes the eye, and you can rescue that fly with the human counterpart of that gene. So that means that human genes function the same in the fly as they do in us. So with that, we can then use the fly to tell us about the function of counterpart human genes. And we can do it fast. Okay, so we can grow hundreds of flies within two weeks. We can see and examine the brain in great detail to look at these various simple assays. So this is what we're doing in my lab here at Penn. We're using the fly to tell us about human brain disease and injury. So that is, we are taking human genes that cause various brain diseases, and we're putting them in the fly, and we're recreating those diseases in the fly. So we can give the fly Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's disease. We can even give the fly spinal cord injuries that cause paralysis in humans. So what good is it to give the fly a disease like that? Why, because then we can cure the fly. Okay, we can use the power of fly genetics to screen for other genes that will delay or prevent that disease or injury. And once we discover them in the fly, we can then ask if those same genes and mechanisms will work the same way in vertebrates like the mouse model organism and then ultimately in us. Thus, by using the very simple fruit fly Drosophila, we can merge the knowledge of our genome, our DNA, with simple approaches to brain disease and function and find new ways to treat and cure them. And this approach is only limited by our brain, okay, by our imagination and our creativity in asking what interesting and important biological functions about the, the brain we can ask the fly to reveal to us. And most importantly, it's fascinating and it's a lot of fun. Thank you.